Hello YouTube, this is um, Jay Phillips here, and I'm here to have a salute with a uh, new gun guide. Um, now I got this recommended to... Lightning Stallion? almost forgot your name, I apologize. But yes, you want to know about a few things about the M1A1 Thompson, aka the Tommy Gun. Um, so, but that's a shout out to you. Uh, he sadly does not have a YouTube channel. Well, he does, but you know doesn't really do much on it, <laughs> which is not bad, because he just wants to watch things, <laughs> and he's already a YouTube channel to do that, so, yeah, <laughs> um, now, it's, this is not really my, like, your wardrobe, you know, like, I usually work in rock and roll shirts, where I am right now, but, uh, I'm just going to boxing soon, so I gotta get a little more of my boxing style on, um, I'm really trying to control the habit of, um, but that's, I guess, that's my thing. Um. Yep. <laughs> but alright, let's get to it. Now, the M1A1 Thompson was actually developed in 1918, which is more towards the line of the end of World War One era. Now, this wasn't issued till the military until, actually, the later 30s. Uh, it was first developed by... Actually, the mob throughout Chicago and New York. First, is going to be equipped to the New York, like the police departments around that area. But of course, around that period of time, mobs, gangs, the mafia, so forth, really controlled the cities. So they got control of the harbor, and they had the establish of the Thompson. But they called it the Tommy Gun because it took a certain type of clip called the Tommy, the Tommy Lewis magazine. Which, the stereotypical thing is the drum mag, which is 50 to actually 100 rounds, depending on the caliber, depending on the caliber. Um, now, the stationary caliber for the Thompson was the 45 ACP round that takes. Um, that's the same exact caliber for the Colt 45 1911. So you can see the comparison, because they were, they were only about six years off from each other. Um... But yeah, it takes a 45 ACP, which is a very deadly caliber at that time, because we didn't really have vests at that point, so that round could penetrate very easily. Um, but now the mob, you see, they always did a gun and run in their fancy old-fashioned Lincolns and Cadillacs, or Fords, um, so forth. So they, adapt, they sort of adopted the 9mm by 19 Parabellum, which is more of a smaller round, but they like that light work, so they can have more rounds in the magazine, which came around with the Tommy Lewis magazine, the 100 rounds, and that caused a lot of damage, because the Thompson has a very high firing. Um, it can at least shoot over with the old Thompson, aka Tommy gun design. It can probably shoot over 700 through 800 rounds per second. Now, at that time, the period of time, um, in the so forth, 1920s, that is a very high fire rate for a gun. <laughs> um, until the MP40, the machine pistol 1940, when I talked about this before, came out. No, that which are made by the Germans, Hickler and Polk. Or um, Schweizer was the um, correct definition for that gun brand. The Thompson is manufactured by none other than Browning. Now... Before Browning was basically a trade-off to Belgium, they made a lot of the United States military weaponry, like the Browning 30 cal, Browning 50 cal, Browning Garand, um, Browning grease gun, Browning carbine, Browning Thompson. <laughs> so, so they're very big for the military, very big. The only thing that wasn't made by the Browning company was the Springfield, which is made by Springfield. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, the, it's a very deadly weapon at that time, very high fire rate, but the only big thing was it was very expensive for the material it was made out of, plus from the fact you can put over a 100 round magazine into it. So, it had to have an automatic, automatic cooling mechanism within the barrel so it wouldn't overheat. That's why, by the time when World War II began to occur, the United States Army um, bought it off of the Mafia. Nah, like, they were, they wanted to use the damn thing. So, like, we need this. Mafia be like, pay Tony. 
Tony is paid. Here you go. So it's sort of like that trade-off. Um, money for guns. That's sort of nowadays. <laughs> but yeah, it's um. So when they brought that in, the United States Army brought that in more towards some when they were going toward Europe and Africa. It was a very, very good weapon of use. Because one, it did overheat. You could have the same ammo as the MP40 took. So what the soldiers did, you know, they took the ammo out of the, they took the ammunition out of the clips and put it in their clips and reused that and there you go. Plus it was very easy to make ammunition, the 9mm. So that's why the U.S. Army is sort of like, you know, we're going to keep using 9mm so we can take it off the enemies that we can easily craft it. Cheap. Cheap is always a good thing for the military. <laughs> Nowadays it isn't. <laughs> always expensive. We got the hot tech shit. <laughs> mm, but yeah, it's a um, very effective weapon. Um, what I always really liked about the Thompson was that the kick. There was barely any kick. So you could remain on focus. Release the whole entire clip. Then there's going to be bullet spread, of course, because it's a rapid fire of some machine gun. So it's going to have bullet spread. But when it's not, like, over the top, releasing around that second, and burst fire, that's things accurate. It's straight on accurate. Because the 9mm is such of a good round when it comes to distance. It goes on for maybe a good 500 or 600 yards until bullet drop. And that's effective. The 45 ACP, when it was more of the use of the Thompson, was by the Marine Corps. Because they like to destroy things. <laughs> So they want a deadly round in that in their gun of theirs that has a high fire rate. Only thing that it really affected to the Thompson was now like I said, the barrel has a cooling system in it, so it wouldn't overheat. Well the 45 ACP it overheated. Cause it was more of a larger round. And firing that thing in full on fury is gonna really heat up the barrel in general for any gun. Especially with the 45 ACP in that thing. But like I said with the burst fire Man, you can pop some heads with that gun. Uh, very, yeah? Mom? No. I apologize. So as, um, moving forward, I apologize for that interruption. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a very effective gun all around. Now, the Thompson was deceased, or unmanufactured, by Torch Line of the later 60s. The last of its use was in Vietnam, but only for a few reasons. Um, because now at that time, it would be more of a cheaper gun to make. Um, engineers, um, or when you had to do a lightweight, when you have an operation, they didn't really use the M16 or the M14. They more so use M1 Thompson or M1 Carbine because it's lighter, so forth. Um, a few other things I have to add. The Thompson had different varieties. The first version was the M1A1 Thompson. But when it was more close of the um, end of World War II, they took that and built in a wooden grip for it. So when you have the big round drum magazine, it would be easier to control. And that's the M190A2 Thompson. Plus the sights were different. Instead of the flat fork sight, at a spoon sight. Or a crescent sight. Because um, that was used by the Airborne. The United States Airborne. Or um, 101st. So they used that because one was light and very effective. Um, then the last version was towards Korea and Vietnam. That's the M1812 Thompson. <laughs> I know, a lot of numbers in there. <laughs> but yeah, that's just the more so of the heavier variant Thompson. So I had the basic um, 25 to 30 round clip magazine, because it took the 45 ACP by 35. That's more of a larger 45. And it could be more used for mid-range combat, and it's still the rapid-fire effect, so it causes a lot of damage. 
can probably shoot through an inch of concrete. Um, but yeah, that's the, really the three variants of the Thompson series. I hope you guys grew some knowledge from this, because I assured <laughs> If you have any more questions, uh, anything I left out, please leave a comment below. Um, now, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I salute to you, and I hope you done good. <laughs> you done good in that. Alright, guys. See you around.